Hi, my name is Max and I've been fortunate enough to be able to run my own companies for the most part of my life, earning over a million dollars a year by the age of 21. And today I'm going to go over some of the top questions I get asked on how to start a business in your teens or early 20s. And the first question I get asked is, when should I start? My answer to that is just go. There's never gonna be a perfect time to start your product or service, and you'll probably never have the ideal amount of time, energy, or money to start the perfect product. The key is to get your product out there quickly and efficiently. Think in terms of what is your minimum viable product. And this is a concept developed by Eric Rise in his book, The Lean Startup, and a technique that's been used to start some of today's largest companies like Twitter, Dropbox, Groupon, and Zappos. The concept is figuring out what your bare minimum is to launch your business and to provide value and then do it. Launching your MVP, as they call it, minimum viable product, prevents you from wasting resources on things that may end up having no value. The last thing you want to do is to spend years planning and creating this grand plan only to find out that customers care about just a small portion of your business. It's easier to learn what the market wants instead of just guessing what the market wants. And this doesn't just apply to tech companies. Let's say you wanted to start a landscaping business. And to start the ideal landscaping business, you need 50,000 for a brand new truck, $1,500 for, for a brand new lawnmower, um, $1,000 for a website, and $2,000 as the down payment for a lease on an office space. So you're looking at $54,500 to start the perfect landscaping business. But let's break it down to what you really need to start a landscaping business. Let's say you can buy a used vehicle for $2,000, a used lawnmower for $200, some miscellaneous tools for $100, and some business cards for 50 bucks. So we're looking at $2,350 to get our business going. Yeah, it's not gonna be the most ideal business, but it's gonna get us out there and making money. But some of you might be saying now, hey, I don't have $2,350 to just go and spend on starting a business. So let's break this down even further. What can we do at the very bare minimum to get this business started? So let's limit our business to things that we can only do by hand. Let's do shoveling, raking, and any other kind of manual labor. So what's, what does it cost to start that? We could buy tools for $50 and buy some business cards, let's say for another $50. So now we're looking at $100 to get our business going and to just get started. And the beauty with this is, let's say you start your business, you get into it, and either it doesn't work, or you start it and you're like, hey, I hate this. Now you're only $100 in instead of $54,000 in, and you can then go ahead and just move on to the next $100 startup and keep doing this until you either find something you like or find something that works for you. And you may be thinking, how am I ever gonna make money when I'm raking a yard for $20 a piece when I could never do more than 50 yards myself? And that brings me to my next point of doing things that don't scale. This is a famous philosophy by Paul Graham of Y Combinator, and it basically means it's okay and actually a good strategy to do things in your business in the beginning that won't scale when your business reaches the next stage, that won't work when your business reaches the next stage. This is because without it, your business may never even grow to the next stage. What you need to do 
is worry about how you'll handle 60 accounts when you're already at 50 accounts. Don't worry today about how you're gonna handle 60 accounts when you haven't even got your first one. The most important thing is getting income in the door now and seizing those opportunities now. And that brings me to my next point, which is don't assume you have a lot of time. No matter the age you are, you need to seize every day. Every single day that you're not out progressing yourself or your business is a day lost. So let's assume that on a day where you work, you make $100. You need to think in terms that you didn't just not make that $100, you actually lost $100. And beyond that, let's say that $100 that you could have made today, you would have reinvested in your company and let's say you make a 10% return on average on any amount of money that you reinvest into your company. So that $100 today then turns into $110, $110 next year. Five years from now, that first $100 then turns into $161.05. Five years. And then after 10 years, that initial $100 turns into $259.37. And that's when it really starts getting crazy. After 20 years, that initial $100 is now $672.72 in your pocket. So by working today, you can use the power of compounding to your advantage instead of your disadvantage. And this really just drives home the point that every single day matters. The last question I'm gonna go over is how should I market? I get asked this all the time. And it is something that varies from business to business, but there are some basic principles that don't change no matter if you're starting a tech company or back to the landscaping company. When approaching marketing, I like to go back to the thought process of what can I do today and what can I do at the lowest cost possible? That way you can test as many things as possible. And if you're just starting out and you don't have a whole bunch of cash, more often than not, that means things that just involve your sweat and talking to as many people as you possibly can that are related to your business. So there's a type of grassroots marketing that I really like that I call knock twice. And basically this is think persistence. People admire persistence, especially in young people. And I think it's because everyone wants to be looked at as a persistent person. So when they see someone else acting persistent, they want to do whatever they can to help those people out. Most people will never ask for your business because of fear of rejection. Some people will ask for your business one time, but almost no one will ask more than once. And that's what really will stand out. Now I'm not saying you need to be an overly aggressive salesman. I'm just saying a friendly, hey, I'm still here and I would love to still have your business. Now I'd like you to think about what it takes for you to use a product or service. Are you gonna use the company that you've seen an advertisement for once or a company that you're reminded of every single week? And the power of this mentality has helped me out more times than I can count. And a perfect example of this is for one of my businesses, I do cold pitches to people or businesses who can refer my business to their clients. And just last week, I walked into a business that could potentially refer mine and I gave the pitch to the assistant manager of the store who said, sounds great, I'll pass the information on to my manager, she's the one who deals with vendors, she'll email you. Three days go by and I got no email. So I typed up a friendly little email to the manager reminding her of what my services do, how I would like to help her customers out and what I would like to accomplish. And another week goes by, no response from the manager. So then I go back to the same store and luckily the manager was working and I go up to her and, and give my same spiel, talk about who I am and remind her that I'd sent her an email. And she was like, oh yeah, I remember your email. And I'm so sorry about that because I meant to respond. We looked at your reviews and we think you'd be a good fit for our company. I could have quit 
any step along that process and would not currently be earning income from that contact. Sure, be conscious that you may get rejected, but do not be afraid to ask more than once. Put yourself out there and ask for their business.